And now on to today's cop story. We are focusing on issues of homelessness in Santa Cruz and the new 180-2020 initiative to curb chronic homelessness countywide. Currently in the United States, over 600,000 people are homeless, 17% which are experiencing chronic homelessness. Chronic homelessness is long-term or repeated homelessness, also accompanied by with some type of physical or mental disability. The 180-2020 initiative is the city of Santa Cruz goal to make a 180 degree to turn on homelessness by the year 2020. Currently, there are more vacant homes than there are homeless people. So the, ho the hope is to fill those homes with people who have experienced chronic homelessness. 180 is part of a larger national campaign to end the effects of chronic homelessness. We interview the director of 180 slash 2020, Philip Kramer, to find out what distinguishes 180 from other similar programs nationwide. We also spoke to the volunteer coordinator at UC at Santa Cruz Homeless Resource Center. Um, four years ago, a big national movement called the 100,000 Homes Campaign uh, invited communities to join in an effort to house the 100,000 most medically vulnerable people experiencing chronic homelessness across the country. And they invited communities to participate in this national movement and uh, was synchronized or aimed uh, with an objective to help those 100,000 people access long-term permanent supportive housing by July of last year, by July of 2014. So Santa Cruz launched our, we launched our own local initiative in Santa Cruz about two and a half years ago called 180-180. So 180 is our main focus on the chronic homeless population. They work directly with the clients to get them not only housed, but also to provide supportive services to keep them housed. A lot of the times, people who have been homeless for a long time need that extra push because there's so many different aspects stopping them from getting into housing. Um, medical conditions, lack of jobs, lack of showers to get clean for an interview, lack of money for clothes for the interview. So there's all these things that once you get below a certain point, it's really hard to bring yourself out of it without support from the outside. Most citizens of Santa Cruz may be wondering how this organization will be benefiting the homeless. The initiative attempts to end homelessness using a strategy known as Housing First. Volunteers coordinators at the HSC explain to us what this approach is and why Santa Cruz needs it. I, I find that it's easier to work with a person that has shelter than it is with a person that doesn't. I'm saying, because partly they get their minds made up and to make that next step and transition to, to you know, end homelessness. Uh, when you're homeless, the only thing you can think about is what you're going to do for the night or what you're going to eat. How are you going to get out of the elements and, and stuff like that? 180s, are, it's, it's good for Santa Cruz. Really, it is. Housing First is a model used by a lot of organizations and in studies it's been proven to be more effective. Whereas a lot of people think that you should be clean from drugs and alcohol first and kind of do a lot of other things before you're ready for a house or deserving of a house, um, studies have proven that that's not the best way to do it. If you imagine someone who is addicted to something, whether it's alcohol, uh, meth, whatever it may be, being on the street where you don't have a place to call your own, you don't have anything to protect you from the outside, you can get robbed, you can get jumped, you can get abused in some way. It's much harder to get rid of that while you're out on the street than it would be to have a home of your own. Santa Cruz current mayor, Don Lane, in an attempt to remedy the city's homeless epidemic, has taken on the 180 initiative and is trying to change the way the city treats our homeless population. We talked to the mayor where he addressed concerns that the citizens of Santa Cruz, both the homeless and the house, have with the city's pledge. So a lot of work has been done over you know, the last 10 years to kind of think, what is there a new way to kind of address this that's both humane and kind of good for the community as a, as a whole. And that 
that's what the 180 180 project has been about is is kind of shifting from a process that kind of kept just kind of took care of minimal needs not very well and kind of sustain people being homeless and it's like the paradigm shift to that doesn't work and that what we need to do is get people out of homelessness that's the solution get them into housing get them the services they need so they can sustain their housing and then just keep get them on a, on a much better path so it's really been a, a major change and it's changed lives individually over 200 people in Santa Cruz County and it's also kind of changing the system for everyone and saving the community money just creating a lot less disruption um, in, in every way so it's really a very effective approach. While the mayor's promise to reverse chronic homelessness is sincere many homeless activists and volunteers have been unhappy with many of the laws passed by the city Stay away orders have been enacted by the city, which give law enforcement the authority to cite people who are sleeping in city benches, beaches, and, and on parks. When I was homeless, I, went, I felt all the, the guilt, the pain of being homeless. The way that people treat you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way that people look at you. Yeah. They figure that if I just give them a quarter, he'll go away. You know what I mean? So that, that was the, the physical aspect of it all. And then it became spiritual because I gave up hope in scripture. I gave up hope in sustainability. And then it became mental. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared. Nobody seemed to care. And then I, I just accepted it. There are not, you know, the reason people are in parks and sleeping rough outside is because there aren't enough safe, indoor, covered, sheltered places for people to sleep. Which, I'll infer, we need more of. The word here is the city is very polarized. There's either full support or you're fully against it. And have those laws that say you, know, you can't sleep anywhere outside and whatever else, you know, all the other things that go along with that. And to me personally, if you don't have a place to stay, you don't have no house, no friend, no money for a hotel, where else are you supposed to go? These laws that say you can't sleep outside are basically telling people that they can't sleep anywhere, that it's illegal for them to just exist in this city. Um, I think that's really counterproductive. There's um, a lot of misconceptions about homeless people, and I think people who support those laws don't really understand what what causes homelessness and how it is to be homeless and get out of it. Um, in my experience, those negative beliefs are due to a lack of exposure. People, I can almost guarantee you, none of them who support those laws have ever come down here and volunteered. They've never talked to a homeless person like an equal. And that, to me personally, is just not a way that we should be living. Um, a survey done in this previous year, 2013, 2014, we haven't gotten the results from 2014 yet, but in 2013, it was estimated that 70% of the homeless population were Santa Cruz locals before becoming homeless. So why should we change from supporting our community to kicking them out and treating them like trash as soon as something unfortunate happens in their life? So those laws to me, I think they're ridiculous, and I think there's better ways to use our resources to support people and get them housed rather than just making it illegal for them to be people. HSC Community Service Coordinator Stefan Nelson, however, remained optimistic about the city's goals despite his unfavorable opinion of the aforementioned legislature. So if I'm making decisions for my life, whether I be homeless or whether I be housed, I have to adhere to the principles of the law. I have to, I have to be committed to my cause, in other words. I can say bad things, I can say good things, but that won't, that's not justice. That's not injustice. It's just words. You know what I mean? If we give the people what they need back to 180, we don't have to judge them. Yeah. We can assist them. Mm -hmm. Earlier this year, the Homeless Persons Legal Assistance Project filed a lawsuit against the stay away ordinances, which they saw as potentially unconstitutional. Mayor Don Lay discussed the city's attitude, which led to the ordinances 
and explains what steps he wants to see happen next. There's a, it's a very mix. There's some part of the uh, there's a big part of the community, especially park users, family, you know, people who take their kids to parks who are really have been very frustrated with kind of the deteriorating social condition in the parks and are just kind of like fed up, and they are saying, please do something. And then there are other folks, especially advocates for people living on the street, who are saying this is you know this isn't helpful. It's it's harsh. It's it's unfair. So we heard both. And that's why I think we, I put a lot of emphasis on kind of looking at the next six months and, and gathering data and let's see, are we, is this having a positive impact on the parks and is it having a helpful impact on the people who, who have been getting citations? Are we successfully um, engaging with them to do, you know, to, to get out, you know, get housing and get, get plugged into more services? If you want more information about 180 slash 2020, visit their website at 180santacruz.org. And if you want to see what you can do to help the city's homeless population, please visit their website at scshelter.org or visit their campus at 115 Coral Street near Harvey West Park in Santa Cruz.